Hi, my name is Jason McCabe with Keysight Technologies. I'm an application engineer, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, connecting to the InfiniVision series oscilloscopes uh, web page, and specifically the browser web control feature, which includes this remote front panel uh, that allows you to um, essentially control knobs and buttons on your PC screen on a LAN connected PC and see a live updating display much as you would sitting in front of the actual front panel of the scopes. It's a very handy feature, but it, it can easily get broken, so we'll cover some of the, the gotchas and hopefully help you get that up and running here today. So uh, this is my MSOX 3104A. I'm started uh, here on PC number one that I'm going to show. I also have a, a different Windows 7 PC and an XP machine that I'll finally show. This is my primary work PC that we're starting with. I'm in the Google Chrome browser. And what I want to show here is that basically I, I am not able to get the browser web control to work. And the reason is that I'm forced into using an older version of Java to get some of my other tools to work. And it, the version is just so old that it won't work with the newest scope firmware. So let me show that here. I'll go to re real scope remote front panel. Immediately I get this pop up here that my Java is out of date. And so I can update it, which would break other things on my PC, and I won't do. Or I can do run this time. Sometimes that'll allow things to work. But in this case, it's just not going to happen. I get the spinning blue wheel, and then nothing, no real feedback. It just doesn't ever come up with anything. Uh, simple remote front panel equally doesn't work. But one thing you can do if you're in a situation like mine is possibly use this tablet remote front panel. You can see it's for an HTML5 web browser. So it, uh, you know, whatever method it uses is just a little simpler, I suppose, and tends to work better uh, and doesn't require necessarily the latest version of Java. And so I can see here that all my basic controls are working. And so that might be just fine for your needs. But if you do want to take full control of the of the scope, it's really best to use the remote front panel if you can. And so let's look at some methods for getting that working. Before I move on, what I want to do is show my Java control panel from this first PC. And uh, just for reference point, version 6 update 41, that's the version I'm required to run on this machine. And that's the one that's too old. Okay, so now I will move along to this other machine here. It's actually another oscilloscope running Windows 7 64-bit, and um, I'm just using it as a, a PC in this demo. So uh, what I first want to do here is show the Java control panel. And this has quite a different look to it than my older version. And version 8, update 25, that's the very latest version that was available as of this morning. In general, it's a good idea as a starting point to go ahead and grab the latest version of Java. Also grab the latest version of firmware for the scope. And to do that, uh, pretty straightforward, you can go to your browser, go to keysight.com. And what I usually do is simply do a search on my model number. I can go to the Visit Technical Support link, Drivers, Firmware, and Software tab. And my uh, firmware should be listed right there. Version 2.37 is the one I want. That's the very latest. That's what's installed on my scope, and so I'll just leave it there. Um, but do make sure you update the latest firmware. Um, quite often, there are changes that happen with the Java security uh, that require changes in our firmware for things to keep working properly. and so. Um, you can easily get into a situation where things are not matched up in versions and, and things just don't work. Uh, so updating the latest is a good idea. And if, uh, of course, it's possible that you might run into a, uh, a problem. And you might want to even consider rolling back to this version that I have here because we do know these versions play well with the scope firmware I'm running and the OSs I'm running and uh, the browsers and so on. So this is just a good reference point. Hope it's helpful. Um, hopefully you, you you won't need to roll back versions, but just keep that in mind. Okay. 
Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and try to connect. I've, I've reset Chrome so that hopefully if you go and install Chrome, you're going to have the exact same set of settings that I have now. So we have a known good starting point here, and this is what you're likely to experience when you try to connect to the scope. So I'll just type in my IP address. So far, so good. Go to my browser web control and my remote front panel. And right away, I notice this plug-in blocked indicator here, and it very quickly goes away and hides itself. And it's this little tiny icon now that you're not too likely to notice. Um, but in Google Chrome, if you try to fire up the remote front panel and nothing happens for, say, 10 seconds or so, uh, that's a good indication that it's probably not going to happen and you need to try something else. So just try to keep in mind that when this happens, take a look at this little icon here. Look for that, and it'll tell you if there's a plug-in that's been blocked. And in this case, I want to just select always allow plugins on this IP address. Of course, if my scope's IP address changes, I'll need to go and do this again. But if I do this one time, then it should work from this point onward. And I'll just wait a few seconds. And Chrome usually gets this running really quickly, uh, quicker than IE in my experience. I'll just do a quick test of some of the controls and uh, make sure that controls working as I would expect. So not quite as responsive as turning real knobs, but it does work. Everything looks good there. And go ahead and try that again. Just start from scratch and make sure that the next time I go back to the browser web control Okay, I do get a prompt this time, and if I want to not get this prompt again, of course, I can check that box and do a run, and apparently I clicked the wrong link. Let me try again. I'm going to get the full front panel. There we go. Try one final time and try to get everything right. Okay, so as you can see, it remembers the settings and it doesn't harass me anymore with the plug-in permissions and, and so on. It just works very reliably and quickly, and it's, it's a nice tool. So, of course, a lot of people are using Internet Explorer, and I'll show that as well. Now, the version that happens to be installed on this machine is older. Uh, it's IE9, and I think 11 or so is the latest version. But hopefully it'll be essentially the same. Uh, when you try to connect with any of the IE versions. Uh, so this I have also reset to defaults, and that's why it's prompting me here for, I'm just going to go with all of the defaults. Um, no, I don't want it to be my default browser. So this is really, should be exactly what you see if you install IE9. All right, so now I'll go to my Scopes web page. Looks good so far browser web control, remote front panel. And now this is pretty obvious down here, this yellow banner that pops up. It's hard to miss. I like that. I'll say sure I want to go ahead and run that. I'll, I'll allow that. I can also allow it for all websites. I'll just do it for this one right now. Okay, so now the plugin's enabled, and I should be able to go to my browser web control and remote front panel. And there we go. Controls are working. And life is good. Shut that down. And oops, let me try IE one more time from scratch. Just make sure it remembers all my settings. Usually takes a little bit longer than Chrome. There it goes. Okay. All right, so Windows 7, uh, basically all I had to do is get the latest version of Java, update my scope firmware if it needed it, 
uh, use a modern browser that supports Java, of course, and um, and just accept that plugin. That's the critical piece. One other quick thing that I don't think I mentioned that I would like to is back in the Java control panel, I have not changed anything with the default settings here. I basically just installed Java uh, version 8, update 25, took all the defaults. Uh, in the past, I had thought that we needed to add an exception for the scope's IP address for things to work right, but I actually have not done that. Uh, my IP is a little different than any of those listed here. So bottom line, no changes at all here to the default settings. I've got high security, et cetera. Make sure, of course, Java content in the browser is enabled. That's a default. All the defaults, uh, you know, go to your web browser and uh, just accept that plugin, and things should work well at that point. So finally, I'll move on to Windows XP. And similarly here, I've reset my browser settings. I should also start with showing that Java control panel. Not a lot of differences here. I, I basically follow the same process in XP. I just installed that latest version. I did get a warning, by the way, that it's not necessarily compatible with XP or supported with XP. Um, but uh, it did allow me to go ahead and install it anyway, and I did, and everything does seem to work okay, at least for uh, our purposes here. Again, I, I haven't added anything to the exception list or changed any of these default settings. So now we're in a, uh, <clears throat> I thought I did a default installation of Chrome. Let me, let me just make sure I'm starting from scratch here. Do a reset. And launch Chrome. That looks more like it. Well, <laughs> still remembering stuff there. I'm not sure why. Oh well. I'll go to my scopes web page, browser web control, remote front panel, uh, plug-in blocked. That mess is there that likes to hide itself. Again, I'm going to do the same thing I did on the Windows 7 machine, and I'll just say always allow. And it should pop up the remote front panel shortly here. And there we go. And it, again, should remember my settings when the next time I go back there. And this machine's a little bit slow. Actually, it's a lot slow. So you'll probably have a better experience with the newer PC. All right, now, finally, I'm going to go to Internet Explorer. And this is version 8. And this has been, again, totally reset to default settings just to make for a, a realistic demo. Okay, I'm trying to show you the... Uh, version number here. There we go. Okay, IE8. And I'll proceed over to the Scopes web page. Start getting all these prompts. Express settings is probably what most people do. Get rid of some of this stuff. All right, now let's try this again. I'm going to go back to my scope page, remote front panel. Okay, and this is also fairly obvious. This uh, little banner here wants to run the plugin. Click here, and I'll say run add on. And we're off to the races. Browser web control, remote front panel. And we should see it shortly. And there we go. Let's make sure this works equally well. And it sure does. So we're in good shape. 
So um, you may not run into all of the same exact scenarios that I have, but hopefully this is a good reference point. I hope this has been helpful. Um, in general, you know, make sure you update the, the scopes firmware and the latest version of Java, or maybe even the version that I'm running here, if you're watching this at some point in the future. Use a modern browser that supports Java, and uh, most importantly, just accept that prompt uh, to run the, the add-in for the scope. And essentially, that's it, and it, it should work in most cases. Um, if you do run into other problems, of course, give us a call, and we'll look further into it. But uh, this should help get you going. Thanks for watching.